Welcome to another exciting episode of Discovering New Horizons for America. Did you think it was deja vu, or could you have remembered something from your past life? As our host, Dr. Jim Polikoff, interviews past life regression specialist Karen Cubico. As always, our podcast is a search for the truth. So let's get to it with Dr. Jim Polikoff, who will lead us on this journey. Yes, this is Dr. Jim Polikoff, and I sincerely do want to thank the thousands of listeners who continue to follow my podcasts. Your loyalty is greatly appreciated. Now, many of you listened to my previous podcast about reincarnation and who famous celebrities may have been in their past lives. During that podcast, I asked if you, yourself, may wish to discover who you were in a past life and how many past lives you may have lived. I recommended the best way to recall your past lives was by having a session with a specialist in past life regression. Typically, this is a professional who is certified as a hypnotherapist with excellent credentials. I also mentioned that on occasion, a psychic intuitive may be able to assist you in recalling your past lives without needing to undergo hypnosis. Fortunately, my guest for this episode is both. Karen Cubico is a certified hypnotherapist skilled in past life regression, as well as a psychic intuitive. Karen is also an instructor and author, having written two important books, which we're going to explore a bit later. Welcome, Karen Cubico. So let's get right to it. It's nice to have you with us. Thanks for joining um, with me, Jim. I really appreciate you allowing me to come on your show and to be participating in everything that you have going here. It's awesome. Well, it's going to be our pleasure. And as you know, the previous podcast we did, we actually went into past lives, reported past lives. I'm going to use the word reported of a number of different celebrities. But in any case, I had mentioned on that podcast that uh, we were going to be featuring a past life regressionist, and that's why your timing here is excellent. So, because many of our many of our listeners are going to want to know how do we find out who we were in a past life. So, so let's get right to it. I'm aware that through past life regression, either by employing hypnotherapy or as a psychic intuitive, you've helped many women and men to recall their past lives. But incredibly, I understand you've actually recalled more than 150 of your own past lifetimes. How many past lives are possible? And <laughs> doesn't this become a bit confusing? Well, it's so that it's a great question, Jim. I think, you know, for me, I started looking into all this past life related things way back in 2004, I found a book called Children's Past Lives uh, by Carol Bowman, and she had healed from asthma. And in her prologue, she spoke about that. At the time, I had severe asthma, and I had been taking a lot of medication for that. So I figured if she can do it, so can I. So I looked into how to remember a past life, how to go about um, learning more about that, how to help other people, how it has helped other people, read a ton of books on the subject. And then um, probably about six months later, I started listening to a self-hypnosis tape to help me remember my own past lives. It took me a solid month of trying. And then I started getting little snippets of past lives, um, which then led me to, to go to a past life regression um, regression, regressionist or regression therapist, um, hypnotherapist, however you want to refer to it, it's, it's similar. And um, I was able to remember qu quite a few in that session. And that just inspired me to remember more. I personally received some, some deeper understanding and healing from that one session. And so now that was a lot of years ago. In that time, I recognized that for me personally, um, I wanted to learn more about, well, so what's the fuss? Why are we coming back here? Why do we have these lifetimes? If we're having all these past lifetimes, which by the way, is an infinite number. And it just, there's, I've asked how many lifetimes do people have? And generally the answer is it's infinite. 
Um, you mean to tell me there could even be more than 150 lifetimes? Oh, Incredible. Yeah. Don't we get tired after a while? Well, so here's the thing. There's no time. There's like just like, um, you know, how Einstein refers to time as being relative. There's literally no time as you start to realize that you're a spiritual being having a human existence here in this earth existence that we're choosing to have right now. Um, but when you become a spiritual being and you pass, maybe you're in the heaven space or otherwise. Known time, as afterlife, right? Right. I mean, there it literally will be a blink of the eye and, you know, a hundred other people might pass and join you where on this earth plane, time is so slowed down. Um, the energy is so d dense, I guess I could, should say, or that things are linear and you don't even um, realize that, you know, time is nothing. I don't, I don't know how nothing. to explain that. I mean, so, don't, we get to, don't we get to enjoy afterlife a little bit? I mean, you know, dance <laughs> around, a float in the sky. I mean, I mean, whatever we do when we get into afterlife, don't we get to enjoy it or do we go right back into another life? Well, so here's the thing. This is a free will choice. This is a free will choice experience because it's from my understanding and um, what I've been shown is that when you are in the spiritual state, that what you are, it's almost like you're living in the land of love, unconditional love, and you can instantly manifest anything. You know instantly how someone feels with their thinking. You speak with telepathy. It's all very... Um, loving experience, but in order for a soul to learn and to grow, you have to have an altered or different experience. And so like, if you wanted to learn how to overcome grief, for example, or um, a relationship pattern of some kind, there is no way to have that experience on the other side. It's no different than if you were interested in learning how to ride a bike or drive a car, you know, you could read a hundred books on the subject, but you don't get it till you get behind the wheel, press the pedal or press, um, start the car and start moving. And then you're like, oh, this is totally not what I expected or, and what a different way to learn is by actually immersing in it. Um, so that's one of the reasons why they bring you here. Um, they bring you here. You choose actually to come here and they help you. They being your guides and, and on the other side to help you with all this. And now, in another podcast, I really want to get into the afterlife experience, but we won't go there now. We don't have that much time, but I know some members of our listening audience wish to understand the process involved in exploring one or more of their past lives. Can you explain how this works? So the re first of all, the reason for someone to reach out and to understand their past lives is to help you really grasp that you have had, let's just say for example, intense, a, a couple thousand past lives. And so that's your whole soul experience that you've had up to this point. So, so say, for example, you want to understand why you had a certain phobia, let's say to spiders or something, you know, um, and you have no reason for that in this lifetime, but you might have passed away or been killed by a spider in a past life because of a bite or something like that. You'll never understand it in this life. You might go to some, you might have such a fear of those spiders that you've wrecked because of one being in your car or something like that. And you're like trying to go to um, psychotherapy to understand and all that kind of stuff, but you don't get it till you actually have a thing called catharsis, which is a deep healing or an understanding from a different perspective, maybe a more grown up perspective or an, an a, like this lifetime. I see that in that other past life that I had a, a life where that spider caused my death. So then I now have a fear of spiders and it's been explained. And so then all of a sudden that fear goes away. Oh, it's just like that. Just, just like that. Just because just you recognize what happened to get you where you are now. Sometimes simply remembering the act of why and it just makes your brain oh that's the answer that's why i'm afraid of spiders and then you see a different perspective now i do recommend personally forgiveness work so like if someone came to me that a fear of spiders i would say okay now let's forgive the spider 
and the venom that was in it that caused your passing, forgiving yourself for putting yourself in an instance, that type of thing to really release any pent up energy um, that might have been like resentment or anger from that experience of being, in a sense, killed by that spider. So, so the same thing would happen with people who are afraid of heights. Somehow, maybe yeah. they fell from a great height in a past yeah. life, but now when they get to a tall building, they're looked down, they get dizzy, they don't want to go near the side of it. Uh, they're afraid of it. And sure. uh, obviously the same thing in a Absolutely. past life that could have been disastrous for them. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of great examples of, of that. And, and Jim, we could spend the whole whole time talking about just those things. But the how do you get to remember a past life? I mean, there's a lot more ways than just to do um, self-hypnosis or a guided meditation or going to see a past life regressionist. Um, you could wake up and have a dream about it. You could go to Hawaii, for example, and have some severe deja vu, like you knew how to go down this particular road. You knew it was going to be if you took a left versus a right because you had a lifetime there at one point or another. And so um, that deja vu experience can come forward. Um, it, it just is there's so far reaching the the things that you can can learn about you yourself, why you like architecture versus why you like painting, why you don't want to go to a certain country, and then why you do want to go to a certain country. I mean, there's just so much. It, it well, just explains everything, why you like things, why you hate things. It's well, again, that's a good reason. And, and, and I assume I'm undergoing hypnosis with a certified hypnotherapist uh, certainly can get you there more easily than if you were to try to do it on your own. You mentioned that it took you over a month to even begin to get glimpses of your past life. So obviously working with a professional is definitely a plus, but you're located in Pennsylvania. A long way to travel for someone who's in California or New York, for that matter. So I understand that you can actually perform a past life regression using Zoom or Skype or whatever. Sure. And uh, I mean, I, I guess I'm mystified by how can a person undergo hypnosis in front of a computer screen? Well, first of all, Jim, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. It's you allowing yourself to relax into a meditative, your brain waves go into a theta state. So it's focused concentration state. Now, generally, if I am helping someone through the computer, through your phone or something like that, I strongly recommend earbuds and a mouth and maybe a microphone that's near your mouth because often, probably I'd say 50% of the time when I'm helping someone um, through past life regression, and helping them remember their own past lives, sometimes their voice gets really super low and then I can barely hear them. Um, the video aspect of it, it, it's nice and everything, but you know, I'm, I'm actually getting like channeled information and seeing and knowing because of the intuitive and psychic abilities that I have, what they're experiencing to help guide them through the process. But at, at the same time, if someone is in a relaxed meditative state, their eyes are closed. They're, they're laying there. They're not going to be looking at me in the video. So the video is kind of just there for maybe the beginning part to explain and talk about what to expect and to, and to um, how it would feel whenever they're going through the experience. And then the afterwards chat where we can, you know, when they come out of that relaxed state, which really feels no different than you and I talking right now, except that you you're going into like a, maybe more of a, a lucid dream um, feeling kind of state where you can still speak out loud about it and um, still visualize or feel things going on that you can explain. And you're not worried about mm. laundry and dinner and all that kind of stuff. That's so really basically you, it sounds like you prepare uh, the person in advance before they have it. And it's that simple Someone sure. can hop on Zoom, click on a link. They're going to be there with you. They could be in Alaska. They can be in Maine, yeah. uh, Indiana, yeah. any part of the country, any part of the world for that matter. I've, I've helped people in Australia. It's all who's ready to re receive the experience, honestly, Jim. I see. But preparation is important. And I'm assuming before you ever enter into the actual session itself, you make some recommendations for someone as to how they can get into more of a relaxed state of mind. Well, I really recommend if you have not ever 
um, allowed yourself to relax, to f- do a meditation, guided meditation. I mean, really, the more that you do have had that experience, you know how to relax all of your muscles, that type of thing. That's that's really the only prep. And then having an open mind, trusting your intuitive abilities. If you see things, if you hear things, if you just get a knowing or you feel things around you or or feel things physically, being open to receive whatever comes to you and however you receive it and trusting that because it's all coming from within. It's all coming from you. And it is um, for you to, for your own personal healing. So trust is a big, is a big thing and a a big thing to know. And then um, really just allowing the information to come. Don't try don't expect this to be just allow whatever to happen to happen. And of course you guide the person along, which is uh, an important Absolutely. part of the process. Absolutely. Now, now um, you, you've already touched upon some of the reasons uh, one would want to have a past life experience or experiences that did identify their past lives, I should say, but um, obviously overcoming phobias, uh, challenges, things of that nature. But is there also a purpose to this that from one past life to the next that you seek improvement? I believe that's a you know certainly a tenet of Buddhism that you're going to each life improve upon yourself and get to a higher state. Is that part of the reason you want to identify with your past lives to be able to remember what your purpose was and where you should be going in this life? That's a, that's a great question, Jim. So I'm going to answer that two in two parts. Um, one is one of the reasons I wrote my first book, it, it is life is just another class. It means about 60 of my own past lives. I was searching for a book that would show me what's all this fuss about. Why are we going in and out of these lifetimes constantly? It feels like, and it seems random. And so what I discovered is that as you work through your lifetimes, you are learning and growing on a soul level each time. So for me in this lifetime, I wanted to raise up my awareness for intuitive ability. So I put things on my path in this lifetime. So that would occur. So I can get to the point where we're having this conversation and I'm helping people um, on a very deep soul level to, to, to see their entire soul experience. But I've had other lifetimes where I've done that same thing. One of the nice things about remembering a past life is you can bring through all your talents and skills just by re-remembering them. That's why there are prodigy children that can come into this life and they're five years old and play a, a, a Mozart piece to perfection. Do you think they might have had a past life where they were an expert in playing the piano for Mozart? I mean, it just is obvious to me. But to some other people, they're like, that's their child's a prodigy, which is fantastic that they were able to bring that through. So they may have picked it up in their past life. And it is, it's very natural that it happened just because they're four years old and can play something on the piano. Uh, right. Obviously, could be traced to a past life they had. Right. Right. So for example, if someone comes to me and they're asking the question, I want to see what I've done at, cause I don't know what I want to have for as a career. I can look at their past lives. Well, look, you've been this, this, and this, um, you can do that. You've, have you thought about this skill? And they're like, yeah, I kind of have. I'm like, well, here's a skill that is innate within you and your whole soul experience throughout your past lives. And so now they're made aware of that skill and they can then choose to right. hone in that those skills that they are deep within their soul. So, so some of our listeners right now may have not even experienced the talent that they might have that could be correct. brought out by a past life correct. regression. Correct. Like I, I gave a reading to someone who was a hairdresser and saw her sculpting architectural buildings. And she was like, you know, my boyfriend, and I just bought this thing that to create something like that. And I'm like, no way, <laughs> because like she was an architect in another lifetime. And so, and sculpting is, you know, not, you don't think about a hairdresser sculpting, but basically they are. And so she could sculpt in this lifetime um, if she chose to, I mean, it just, it's just so connected. So, so that, that's, that, that's very interesting though. Now I, I'm yeah. just curious if, because, you know, obviously, for some of this, you're using, you know, hypnotherapy, 
where the, the person is under hypnosis. But there are some people who are either wary of being hypnotized or they're just uncomfortable or they can't relax. They just can't get into the state. But right. I think one of the advantages, correct me if I'm wrong, but as an individual, I mean, as a, uh, a psychic intuitive, you're able to actually help someone recall a past life without necessarily undergoing hypnosis. Am I correct? Correct. Well, so what happened for me is a super long time ago, I was working on myself trying to release the asthma, um, which then occurred. I had one of my spirit guides talking with me and she said, you know, you can ask us anything. And my, at that point in my life, I was just working with a friend of mine to work on writing my first book. And I came out of that past life regression. And I said to my friend, I said, what do you think she means by that? Anything, anything. <laughs> and so, but what, when I was able to see and talk to her was when I experienced going through a past life death. And so um, I asked some of my friends who were open to all this stuff, um, meaning all the metaphysical coolness. And I said, do you have any questions for a spirit guide? I don't know what to ask because I was just, my intent was only to just experience past lives because of what I had read and understood. And so I had someone ask me a bunch of questions. And so I went back to that lifetime, went through the death scene, it's a very long process, asked my, saw my spirit guide again. I said, hey, I have a friend who has some questions. Do you mind if I ask? You mentioned the other day that we could do that. She was more than gracious, answered all the questions. My friend wrote all down everything I I heard her say, and she wrote it down. And then I went back to the person who asked the question. She was crying. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I think I have something here. <laughs> and so after a while, though, it took a couple of years or so, I was able to then um, allow myself, instead of going through the past life death, to start to see other people's spirit guides, angels that are protecting over them, all their past lives. And then eventually I asked for a little organization with all that kind of stuff and I have a, a painting that I give every person I give a reading to help them understand what I'm looking at, because now I can see just like, clear, like almost clear as day, people all around a particular person, all their past lives. And that information just comes to me, whatever it is that they're open to, to receiving and understanding, whether it's a past life or, or in between or otherwise. It's, it's that's really absolutely amazing. amazing. And I think I now am beginning to understand because, you know, when you, you speak of psychics, some people say, oh, that's just a bunch of woo woo. I mean, you know, psychics, uh, you know, they're, they're not always legitimate, et cetera, et cetera. But you add the word intuitive after yeah. psychic. And I think that that's the thing that really, to me, sounds credible, that you have an ability to be intuitive. And the fact that you can be intuitive is you can help people along. And again, I'm, and as you mentioned, we're going to get into spirit guides and angels in a second. But, you know, it's um, now that I think I understand why you would call yourself a, not only a psychic, but a psychic intuitive. Am I correct? Well, so some people don't understand what it means to be a psychic. And like people often say, well, can you read my palm or tell my future? Well, yeah, I mean, it's your choice, right? It's your free will choice. It's no different if you, I, I know this is like um, not a visual thing, but if you look at your arm and you look where your elbow is and that is your life path and you've gone up to your wrist, your hand is spread open. You have five choices of decisions that you could possibly make. Those are five different paths that you could go on. Five you fingers. Walk, yeah, yeah, five fingers, five paths. And you could go the path of your thumb, if you if if you will, and that would be a completely different path if you chose a left versus a right and went the path of your pinky. I'm just trying to give a visual. Um, it's it's your free will. You could walk out my door and take a left versus a right, and your life path from that point forward would change because you made a decision to do something different that might have been along a different path. Not to say what's right or wrong, you're still getting to learn lessons and get to some endpoint. I mean, I personally don't often give future stuff because like it, it changes so much. And if you're talking about another person involved, that's their free will plus your free will, lots of choices going on. But from my perspective, the deepest um, help that I can provide through someone's past past lives, 
through the information provided to me by their spirit guides and the angels is to, to release any pent up traumas, emotions, resentments stored within their energy to help them. Because what that looks like to me, my psychic ability that's um, the highest is seeing. And so like I can see energy on a person and, and like a dark spot would be like a trauma. And so it, I know I've helped someone when that dark spot turns to a bright luminescent area of light because you've released that garbage, if you will, and 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 made it a, a bright, beautiful place to be. And so when you do that, that higher um, spiritual being aspect of you easily flows throughout your entire physical body, your energetic body, and your entire whole soul experience, which opens up your own personal intuitive abilities, which are all innate within us. It's just a matter of trusting it. Now that sounds to me to be very credible. I'm glad to, I'm glad you express it in, in that way. Uh, some people, it's difficult. It was for me for quite a while to actually imagine having a spirit guide or being surrounded by angels. I mean, I always used to think I had an angel around, but until I actually spoke with you one time, I didn't really realize that there's more than one angel. Sometimes we may even have more than one spirit guide. Can you explain why this is real? You know, I guess it'll go. I'm going to go back to before the year 2000 for me, where I personally grew up Catholic. I had um, had some trauma things happen to me personally, where I was like, "Yeah, if that happened to me, there's no God." And I was. You could consider me atheist, truly. And then in 2001, I had a near-death experience when my second child was born and something changed in me in that instance. We both nearly died and uh, we came out of that um, fine. And around the time when they were three months old, I went to see a psychic. My sister wanted to go and I was like, sure. And the psychic said to me, hey, um, you're going to get really religious. And I'm like, yeah. Okay. And then he also said, your child has a really strong third eye, which is your intuitive abilities. It's a, it's a chakra um, that's located on your forehead. Uh, if y'all don't help them understand what that's about, uh, they might go not, not do well in their life. He actually used the word go crazy, but I don't like to say that. And I'm like, Oh, in my head, I'm like, we almost just died. That's not happening. So that's what got me into doing all this research. And when I started to experience some of these past lives, I still was like kind of on the fence, you know, what, what, what's this all about? And then um, the day that I, I saw and met my spirit guides sitting on this beautiful bench somewhere very wonderful and could feel all the love they had for me. I mean, there was just three of them standing there at the time. I was like, Oh, this is not the same as earth. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, and they're speaking to me just like you and I are talking. And then later on through my experiences, I actually passed in a past life, went through the light that people talk about and saw my guides again, could speak with them, and then went to a room where these angels were towering over me, pouring this beautiful, pure, unconditional love, and I'm talking with them, and so that's when I first started getting into all this, and just they just slowly introduced me to more angels, and to help me understand how to speak to other people's spirit guides, and it's come to now today, where I know without a doubt, we have a team because having an earth human experience is hard because we've chosen it to overcome obstacles, to overcome challenges. Sometimes it's to learn about how to work through grief or to work through an abuse relationship because you're putting your foot down, you're putting your personal power on, you're learning to love yourself even more. Sometimes you are learning how to love because maybe in other lifetimes you haven't had that opportunity. And this lifetime, 
filled that need. When you're on the other side of the spiritual being, you're picking out all these things. You've chosen this life. You've chosen where you want to live, people you want to interact with, your body and all the chaos that comes into your life on purpose so that you can overcome it. It's all how you get to that point. So people, I mean, let, let's use what's going on right now, which is a sad, but sad situation, but we're right in the middle of a, a, a crisis where people are being, uh, you know, up bombarded. Uh, did they actually choose a life where they would come back and have to be fearful of bombs and see their children killed and hospitals yeah. tear? I mean, I'm, I'm just asking, I mean, did they that life? Oh, you know, that's, that's a tough one to answer, Jim, because we're never really dead. We're, we go through these experiences to help others in this earth experience to know what we don't want to have in our lives. Um, some people have such trauma from war related things. It, it's so saddening. Um, but if, if collectively we chose to learn to love one another, which has been something that has been said to us for thousands of years by many different religious figures, there wouldn't be war. Well, because we're true. not, you know what I'm saying? Can't we but all Could just, it also be, I've read that sometimes long? you need to experience different things that perhaps for some of these people, they had good lives, but they have never really been able to experience trauma. And, and perhaps they put themselves in a situation so they could at least have that part of their being. Is, is there any uh, credibility to that? Well, that is also true. That is also true. I mean, if you have not, um, there are some examples that I can give where some folks that I've read or regressed where they've been in a war situation and they learned that to value friendship to value teamwork. It might have been their last day when they got it. Um, sometimes um, when I remembered a lifetime forever ago it was in World War II and the entire street was bombed. I'm a five-year-old child, but me and my younger siblings and my grandmother and a ton of other people all died in mass all at once. And you're, we floated up and the entire sky, oh my gosh, it, it is, I mean, it gives me chills to remembering this vision. It was filled like, like a complete cloud cover of, of angels putting their, wrapping their wings around these small children who were um, all being passed over around the same time. It was just incredible. It was incredible. Um, and so, you recall seeing angels at this time after you oh, passed on, you've been yeah. bombed, you're, you're, you're dead. But now right. you're seeing the angels who are coming to try to, to comfort you. Correct. Because it was such a trauma. They, the angels come to help. Um, even, even with 9-11, um, a, a lady that I know, she, was, she knew and saw the angels all around where the incident occurred here near Pittsburgh with the crash of the plane. Um, sometimes those huge traumatic things, it actually... It's, it's terrible when those things happen and no one ever wants that to occur. But if you looked at the state of the United States and the mindset of the people before 9-11, where we were very separated and then 9-11 occurred, massive amount of people came together. Yes, they did. People so came the, together the, then. It's a shame that we have forgotten that experience uh, just after 20 years or so, but people know, did come together. They did. And so the folks that gave their lives for that experience, in a sense, brought millions of people to remember, hey, we're in this together and to, to start to come together and to recognize that. Um, and and I, I have um, regress, one person at least, that had been through the experience from 9-11. And so it's um, very, uh, it's very interesting. Now, I understand in addition to everything else that you do, you also do readings uh, in which you actually introduce a person to their spirit guides and angels. Correct. Does this then, or do you teach them or do they learn it? Does this open up communication to when 
that individual might have a personal problem, a trauma, uh, abuse, something that happens in their life that they then themselves can turn to their angels or their spirit guides? Is this something they learn from your readings? Well, so I, I, I am guided to talk about whatever it is their guides and angels want me to, to say. Teaching people how to connect with anyone on the other side is um, high on the priority list, priority list for me. Um, so if, if you would come to me, for example, Jim, I would start to get a number of how many guides and how many angels are standing there with you. And then whoever wanted to talk would come forward. And then I always try to reiterate or to express, look, if your spirit guide, let's say his name is Samuel, he comes through, I can tell you all about him, how he knows you and all that type of thing. Then you have a connection with that spiritual being. Can you ask him specifically? Sure. If you wanted to, I usually just personally, I just ask the whole team. But what I recommend is instead of just saying, Hey, can I have some help? They're going to be like with, with a cup of coffee. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or did you want the green light? But if you say, um, I'm, you know, with gratitude always, because they're here to, to help us. Can you please help me understand and to learn, like you're speaking to your guides and angels. Can you please help me understand the root cause of my relationship issues? Can you help me um, please get a monetary way out of this relationship? Can you help me find the career that is my passion so that I can go to work and it won't feel like work? You, those are the kinds of things, very specific, emotional based with genuine gratitude. Those things get answered um, pretty quickly. And, and because they've been in contact with their spirit guide, they now or guides, they now know uh, these individuals behind them, uh, they actually, you know, they actually can get this kind of communication. I mean, they can well, receive so this kind of guidance. You don't have to come to me to find a specific spirit guide. You can do it right this minute. You have to have the faith and the trust that they're there for you first. Right. And some people can ask for them to show themselves to them in their dreams. They, they, or to feel them next to you. I know I've spoken to people and they'll feel someone touching their shoulder or their head and they don't know where that is. And I can see that it's one of their spirit guides or know that information, but um, trusting that they're there for you is the first step because there are a lot of people out there who feel very alone, especially now with the COVID times, you know, where you can't get out and meet with people and see your friends and all that kind of stuff. They feel very alone. Meanwhile, you have a crowd of people because they're here to help you. Um, you can ask them to show you a specific sign. You can ask them to, to help you hear a particular song, a chime, a sound, a smell, a number, a butterfly, whatever floats your boat or fills a feather, whatever makes you feel connected to the other side. You could ask for a specific one from a specific angel or a specific guide. Um, they don't care. They're just super excited that you, they know that you are aware that they're here to help you. Um, so it's like the name of the song, I'm a believer. Right. You've got to believe <laughs> before they're going to come to you and, and actually be able to communicate back to you. You have to believe in them to begin with. You just right. can't say, well, I kind of think they're there or, oh, I don't know if this works or not. You really have to have it boils down to the word faith. And Well, belief. and correct, because if you would... Um, not for sure believe, you might see signs all over the place and ignore them. <clears throat> when I first started learning about all this stuff 20 years ago, I asked for a feather because a couple books I read kept saying, ask for a feather as a sign from the other side. I'm like, all right, I'll ask for a feather. I saw a feather and I was like, meh. The next day I saw another feather and I like, meh. And the third day, literally three days in a row, I saw a pile of white stuff in the back of my yard. And I thought, oh, a garbage bag blew back there or something. I walked back there. There was a literal pile of feathers. And I was like, oh, I didn't get it. <laughs> they showed me one. The last two days, they had to show me this whole pile. And when it completely dawned on me, I walked back to get a feather from that pile and it was gone. And I was like, 
not creepy at all because <laughs> it was it's kind of cool because like there was without a doubt that yeah. they were showing me they were there for me but i had to be shown that whole pile of feathers <laughs> to get it but i mean it's it's all well, good. that's that's something well let's turn to the romantic side of reincarnation all right uh, my question to you is do you believe in soulmates and if so do soulmates reunite in each new lifetime Jim, that's a great question. Also, you've got, got a lot of great questions. So soulmates are a fun topic. Um, I went through a major relationship change almost nine years ago or so. And I was feeling like, yeah, there isn't any, you know? And so I did a lot of inner searching and asking a lot of questions about relationships, about are there really soulmates, that type of thing. And um, one day in 2018, I was learning in a class, um, or I guess I already had known how, but like practicing channeling, which is um, the ability to just allow spiritual beings to talk through you. And so I channeled Archangel Chamuel. I had never even heard of him before. And he actually is an archangel for soulmates. And so I'm like, perfect discussion. And I asked, what's the, what's the, what's the fuss about soulmates? What are they really? And the way that he explained it to me is that every person that you meet is your soulmate, because in a sense, we're all one, we're all connected. And um, that's a whole bigger story to discuss, but it's the percentage of connection that you have with another human that makes them a higher percentage connection to have a true love soulmate, which is completely different than Joe Blow walking past on the street. Do you know? Uh, and so Chamuel said, what you're trying to attain is someone that has like an 85 or more percentage of connection to you. Now that doesn't mean that they are your twin exactly where they like everything you do. And they are like, a match in all those kinds of ways, but in, in different kind of ways. And so I said to him, well, what was up with that terrible date I had on Friday? And Chamuel was like, well, he was 17%. I'm like, well, no, duh, because it was an <laughs> awful day. But so, but it was a learning experience. And, and he said, it was great to have that. So we could have this discussion. So you can see the vast contrast in this is not a match versus this is. Now I've had since then, for the last four months actually, had someone enter my life who is 89% connection because I just asked for that percentage of connection. And I'm telling you, we get along fabulously on so many levels in so many ways. It's, it's truly an amazing, amazing connection. So to me, he's my soulmate in this lifetime. Do I want that for every person I meet? Absolutely, because I totally didn't expect that took a lot of years to get here and a lot of personal healing because when you are looking for someone that is your highest match, the first person that you have to love is yourself. You have to heal yourself on a very deep level from all the trauma, maybe some relationship patterns that you were not aware of and to release all that and to grow that inner confidence that you deserve mutually supportive and loving connections in your life. And that, that gives that the people who come in your life, no other choice, but to match your vibration of mutual support and love. And then but what I think you're, you're saying is it's not necessarily love at first sight. It's getting to know you. Well, with this particular person I met, it was love at first hug. I'm going to say that. Love at first. Oh, all right. That's, that's, I'll buy that. <laughs> from, from, from a decent amount of time ago. So it's kind of cool. Well, I, I don't want, uh, as we're getting into the latter stages of this interview, you've written two books. Uh, one is uh, that you mentioned just a bit ago, Life is Just Another Class, One Soul's Journey Through the Past Life Regressions. I found it quite uh, fascinating. In fact, in the book, I believe you recount 16 of your past lives. And so tell us about the book and how it influenced your present lifetime. 
So just that's a lot. That's a heavy question. It's loaded. There's so many ways. Well, you have three sentences to answer. (laughs) (laughs) Three sentences. Oh, man. Uh, So I release a lot of fears, like a lot of fears, fears I didn't even know that was a issue. Like you could have called me a germaphobe. And by the time I was done researching and writing this book, my girlfriend's like, you know, you're not a germaphobe anymore. You didn't put that in your book yet. And I was like, oh, I didn't even recognize that that healed to recognizing that I'm like, oh my God, I have a relationship pattern that's still happening from that lifetime and this other lifetime that's not included in that book. And I'm like, holy crap, what am I doing in this relationship now? You know, which brought me to ending that relationship, truly. So it's, um, it was, and then it, it inspired me to write the Making True Love book, which is the second book that I wrote. Because if I recognize relationship patterns and they were consistent through other lifetimes i can't be the only one so um so i did a lot of work on on finding more information out on that so the writing these books actually helped you come in contact with uh with things that you needed to deal with in your life and absolutely. you kind of it sounds like each book moved you on to a different place absolutely I mean, it's just from one to the next to the next. And, you know, I have a couple more books I'm working on now. And one is to help children to stay awake when they're first born. Children, babies, they can see spirit guides, angels, pass over people without any effort. They have full use of their intuitive abilities, can know and remember their past lives until we tell them otherwise that they can't. And our listeners can find these books on karencubico.com, which we'll repeat in a few minutes. And also on our website, uh, you definitely can find it, bodymindsoulpodcast.net. We'll have the information. You can find it in both places. These are fabulous, fascinating books. You can get them on Amazon. But uh, anyway, it, it, it's become clear that Karen Cubico is a healer. Your life is committed to helping others, correct? That's true. Absolutely. And as a result, yeah. as a result, I know you offer other courses and events. Do you have anything coming up we should know about? Well, I just taught a class yesterday, Jim, on um, helping people understand the basics on past life regression, how it can help them, and um, opening their intuitive abilities with through a, a group guided meditation that I did. Uh, I have those classes. I have a couple more scheduled this year. I can be found at local fairs for uh, mind, body, spirit fairs here in, in around the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Um, I do offer things online. If people wanted to schedule something with me, readings, past life regression, one-on-ones all the time. And um, that's what's coming soon in my future. <laughs> well, it, 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 again, I want to remind our audience, I mean, uh, what I think what I get the feeling what we've explored in this episode is almost like the tip of a magnificent iceberg. There's still so much more we can cover, uh, which obviously we're running out of time now. But let's make sure that our listeners can get to your website. Uh, it's KarenCubico.com. And I want to spell your last name, K-U-B-I-C-K-O, correct? Correct. Right. So go to karencubico.com or again, uh, come to our website, all of this information. I mean, our listeners are used to coming to our website to find other things. Uh, So definitely you can find all the information you need about Karen, how to get in touch with her. And uh, again, you know, ours is bodymindsoulpodcast.net. Of course, we're going to repeat that several times before this episode is over, but There you're going to be able to find all about her services, her books, her happenings, all these good, wonderful things. And I think you're going to want to know more about Karen. We've just, again, hit the tip of the iceberg here today. So it's been wonderful and enlightening. It's such an experience to have you as my guest, Karen. And I want to thank you so much. Thanks, Jim. I really appreciate you taking the time to spend with me today. I, I appreciate you. All right. Well, we appreciate you, too. You can discover more information about our guest, Karen Cubico, along with the links to her website and other information about past life regression and healing. Simply come to our website, jamespolikoff.com. 
That's James, P-O-L-A-K-O-F dot com. You'll also find a wide variety of terrific podcasts you may have missed. Again, visit jamespolikoff.com. Now back to Dr. Jim. So we want to thank Karen Cubicle for a great interview. I highly recommend visiting her website, karencubico.com, so that you can begin discovering the past life or past lives you may have lived. So let me share a health tip with you today. It's actually, there's two ways to live longer. That's what I want to talk with you about. The first way is to maintain a healthy weight. I'm sure you've heard that before. But you've got to get up and move. You want to aim for about 30 minutes of activity on most days. You don't have to do it every day, but most days of the week. Walking, for example, is great. If that's the best you can do, just get out and walk. Walk inside the house if it's raining outside, but get that walking, get that activity in. And then secondly, you must make healthy food choices. A recent study found the healthiest people followed a Mediterranean-style diet. So if you visit our website, jamespolikoff.com, you'll find the John Hopkins version of the Mediterranean diet that I recommend. This is Dr. Jim Polikoff. Please continue to join us for a New Horizons podcast every week and visit jamespolikoff.com for more health tips, informative blogs, and many great podcast episodes. Thanks again for listening.